Hi, I'm Ken of Wrist Innovations, and today let's talk about all the special features of the Chidi Tech X Max 3 3D printer. At the end of the video, I'll share a special upgrade I created to easily get to the back of the printer for changing filaments and servicing the printer, so you don't want to miss that. I will cover the printer's key features, setting up the printer, my printer performance, and the pros and cons of this printer. I want to thank Chidi Tech for sending me the X Max 3, so let's get started. The X Max 3 is a beast of a 3D printer. Its overall measurements are 22 inches wide by 22 inches deep by 24 inches high, and it weighs 66 pounds. So, you may want to consider getting some help to move the printer around, especially lifting it up onto a table. To put in perspective, the Bamboo X1 Carbon weighs only 31 pounds, and the Creality K1 Max weighs 40 pounds. The X Max 3's build volume is 325 by 325 by 315 millimeters, so it's big enough to print a full size helmet or any other large print. It's a fully enclosed Core XY printer that uses 10 millimeter diameter rods for the X, Y, and Z axes. The X Max 3 has a 24 volt, 300 watt chamber heater that provides a maximum chamber temperature of 65 degrees C, which is the only 3D printer family on the market in the sub $1,000 price range that has this feature. This feature can really reduce warping of parts, especially for engineering materials such as nylon. To keep moisture sensitive filaments dry, the printer has a dry box located at the back of the printer that includes desiccant. The X Max 3 has a maximum hot end temperature of 350 degrees C and a maximum build plate temperature of 120 degrees C. The printer comes pre installed with a copper alloy nozzle. In addition, a hardened steel nozzle is included for abrasive filament. There is an all metal hot end which has a ceramic heating core which heats up very quickly. Nozzle options are copper or hardened steel in 0.4, 0.6, or 0.8 millimeter diameters. Because it's an enclosed design with the actively heated chamber, it can print not only PLA, PETG, and TPU, but also higher temperature engineering plastics such as ABS, ASA, and carbon filled nylon. It has a maximum speed of 600 millimeters per second and a maximum acceleration of 20,000 millimeters per second squared. It's a fast 3D printer and it can produce a bench sheet in approximately 17 minutes. It has auto bed leveling and GD Tech recently upgraded their sensor from a BL touch probe to a proximity sensor. But it has a manual Z offset, which I feel is a bit outdated, especially for a $900 printer. It does have a filament runout sensor and that's located at the back of the printer. The printer has input shaping, or what Chidi Tech calls residence compensation. The X Max 3 uses Clipper firmware and it comes with an 8GB eMMC storage. However, you can upgrade to 32GB storage for $20, which I think is worth it. I wish they would just include the 32GB storage as standard because it doesn't take up many files to fill up the 8GB storage. The printer has Wi-Fi so you can print wirelessly or use a USB thumb drive. It's a bit odd that the USB connection is located on the right back top of the printer. The printer has two 450 watt power supplies which are needed for the build plate and the actively heated chamber. The printer doesn't come with a camera, however they just launched a camera option for $40. I bought the camera and installed it on my printer. Installation was relatively easy. I unplugged the printer, removed the back panel, and connected the USB cable to the PCB. I ran the USB wiring along the bottom of the printer and attached the camera to the right front corner of the printer and connected the USB cable to the camera. I hope Chidi Tech includes the camera for future production because this is a standard feature for many other printers in this price range. There is a carbon filter located at the back of the printer. The printer comes with a PEI double sided texture to build plate. And there's an auxiliary fan located at the right side of the printer, which really helps with parts cooling. The X Max 3 has a nice 5 inch LCD touchscreen, which runs its own firmware. At the making of this video, December 2023, the current pricing of the X Max 3 is on sale for $899. The Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon 3D printer is currently priced at $1,199, so $300 more. 
After covering my printing experience of the XMAX 3, I'll comment on if I think the XMAX 3 is a worthy competitor to the Bamboo Lab X1C. If you have a 3D printing need, but you don't have a 3D printer, I have the solution for you. That brings me to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you're working on any prototype projects, they can help you when you need a variety of parts. Besides making PCBs, they also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and lots of different types of 3D printing, including metal printing. I recently needed a metal 3D printed part out of stainless steel. I went on their website, uploaded my design, selected the material and quantity, and I got an instant quote. Then they manufactured the parts within nine days and shipped them right to my door. Give them a try and I think you will be amazed at what they can do for you. I have a link in the description below. The printer was well protected in the packaging and setup was relatively easy. The box includes a spool holder, a filament dry box with desiccant, a high temperature hot end, four rubber anti-vibration feet, 500 grams of filament, a power cord, ethernet cable, USB drive, and some miscellaneous tools. I removed the miscellaneous foam and packaging. Next, I connected the power cord and turned the power on. I followed the screen prompts, which instructed me to cut and remove the zip ties holding the axes. Then I removed four screws that held the bed in place during shipping. I then removed the foam from underneath the build platform. Then it was time for calibration. The first step is to manually set the build plate temperature to your material. In my case, for PLA, the build plate temperature is 45 degrees C. Once the build plate is up to temperature, it's time to set the Z-axis offset using the included special shim paper. I had a hard time reaching through the front of the printer due to the small clearance between the frame and the build plate. So I removed the top cover and reached inside from the top to test the shim paper fit. After the Z offset is done, it's time for the auto bed leveling followed by input shaping. The spool holder is located on the back of the printer, which is hard to access due to the weight of the printer to move it around to get to the back. You really need to be behind the printer to load filament, but you also need to have access to the LCD screen so that you can trigger the load feature. First, you manually set the nozzle temperature based on the type of filament you're loading. Then you push the filament through the tubing until it reaches the extruder. Once the nozzle has reached the correct temperature, choose the amount of millimeters of filament that you want to purge and then push the downward arrow. The extruder will then purge the filament onto the build plate. Repeat this step until you're satisfied that you've purged the nozzle of any of the previous filament. Now it's time to print my first part. Going into the Files tab, I selected a preloaded model. Of course, my first print needed to be a Benji, so I selected the file and pushed the print button. My first print turned out to be an open cabin Benji. Actually, this is where I began having problems with the printer because it would just lose power, the LCD screen would go dark, and the printer would just stop working. I contacted GD Tech technical support and they responded the same day via email because we were about 13 hours apart. After doing some of my own troubleshooting, I discovered that one of the power supplies was defective because I measured the voltage of 110 volts coming in, but not 24 volts outgoing. So I ordered a replacement power supply on Amazon and I had it the next day. A safety note, you will need to be very careful with troubleshooting with the power on due to the exposed 110 voltage wires. GD Tech did offer to provide a power supply if I determined that to be the problem. However, I didn't want to wait because I didn't know where the power supply would be coming from from GD Tech, whether it be local from the US or potentially overseas. And I didn't want to waste any more time trying to get the printer up and running. I installed the new power supply and that fixed the problem. So I was back in business. I don't blame GD Tech for the defective power supply because it was an intermittent problem and I assume the symptoms probably didn't show up in their final testing. This Benchy came out very good. Next, I printed another one of their preloaded models, the Fidget Cube. The print quality was good and the clearance was fine because the fidget moved easily. 
Next, I printed this preloaded model faceted bunny, which also came out good. All these prints were using PLA. Then I moved to other prints that required slicing. I downloaded Chidi Tech's slicer software to my computer, which is based on the Prusa slicer. They have a user guide built into the slicer, which is very helpful. There's also a device tab that allows you to see the fluid web interface directly in the slicer. This is where I can see my installed camera. I imported this phase from Maker World, and this is a Hendrix design. I used Sparkle PLA with a 0.12 layer height, and it turned out beautifully. It's very hard to even see the layer lines. Overall, the quality was comparable to the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Next, I printed this geometric shape from PETG, which turned out overall pretty good, but it did have a few defects. Then I printed this calibration model from Printables, designed by Gabbox 3D in the same PETG. The results were pretty good. The 10 mm diameter feature measured 9.72 mm, which is only 5 thousandths of an inch under. And the 10 mm length feature measured 10.09 mm, which is about 3.5 inches over. The overhang test did well, up to about 50 degrees but it did print up to the design of 80 degrees. I'm not into cosplay, but I wanted to print a large model, so I chose this Eiffel Tower model from Printables designed by Yell. I printed it in Chidi Tech ABS. The Chidi Tech slicer software warned me to turn on some supports, but I went to see how the print would turn out without supports, and I was pleasantly surprised. Although there were a few defects, after I cleaned them up, I think the print turned out really well. Next, I moved on to the Chidi Tech carbon filled nylon filament. I came across these tool files on Aurora Tech's YouTube channel, and she provided a link to the files, which were created from 3dprintedhardware.com. Links to Aurora Tech's channel and to 3dprintedhardware.com are in the description below. I printed the pliers first in ABS and then in the carbon filled nylon, and I think they came out great. I set the chamber temperature to 40 degrees C and also 55 degrees C for the nylon, and I didn't have any problems warping on any of the parts. I continued to print additional plier designs, and they all turned out beautifully. Stefan of CNC Kitchen recently published an excellent video on the benefits of a heated chamber, especially when printing engineering filaments, and that link is in the description. So before I cover the pros and cons of the X-Max 3, let me show you my special upgrade. I mentioned it's very hard to move the printer due to its 66 pound weight, so I designed this Lazy Susan platform for the printer. I used a high quality lubricated bearing Lazy Susan with locking knobs, which allows me to easily rotate the printer to have easy access to the back of the printer to work on the hot end, change filaments, or service the printer. I will have more details on how I made the Lazy Susan in a future video. So now let's talk about the pros and cons of the X-Max 3. First, the pros. The Chidi Tech X-Max 3 is a solidly built, fully enclosed 3D printer. The large print volume, core XY design, and unique actively heated chamber allow you to 3D print a variety of materials. So not only PLA, PETG, and TPU, but also higher temperature engineering plastics such as ABS, ASA, and carbon filled nylon. The quality of the prints from the X-Max 3 rival the quality I have experienced with the Bamboo X1 carbon printer, which I consider to be a gold standard of 3D printing. I like the clear plastic door and top panel and LED lights, which make it easy to see inside the printer. It doesn't bother me that they're made out of plastic or that the side panels are plastic, but they could streamline the overall size of the printer while keeping the same print volume because there's a fair amount of wasted space inside the printer. The X-Max 3 at $899 is $300 less than the Bamboo Lab X1C, so I consider the X-Max 3 to be a good overall value. Now the cons. I don't consider the heavy weight of the X-Max 3 to be a con, but the weight makes it more difficult to gain access to the back of the printer for filament loading or servicing the printer. I recommend that you consider implementing a filament dry box 
and locate it to the side of the printer so you don't have to move the printer every time you need to change a filament. Another concern I have about the XMAX 3 is the amount of time it takes to replace an entire hot end assembly. There are eight screws and multiple wires you need to disconnect and you need to have access to the back of the extruder in order to work on the extruder assembly. Comparing that to the Bamboo Lab A1 or A1 Mini nozzle swap that can be done in less than 30 seconds, GD Tech should consider designing a more streamlined way to change the hot ends. I think GD Tech should include a camera as a standard feature for the XMAX 3. So now that they have launched a camera upgrade for the existing XMAX 3s, they should consider that on future production of the printer. Updating the firmware is a bit cumbersome because you have to go onto the GD Tech website, download the firmware to a USB drive, load the USB drive into the printer, and wait for it to upload. In comparison, the Bamboo Lab firmware updates are handled via automatic notices when turning on the printer, and they are completed very quickly. Also, GD Tech should automate the Z-axis offset that is a standard feature for many other printers on the market. Overall, I consider the XMAX 3 to be a very good 3D printer, and I'm glad I have it in my arsenal. The large print volume, reasonable price, and the heated chamber that allows you to print high temperature engineering filaments are the best features of the printer. There are some quirky aspects of the XMAX 3 that diminish the user experience, but if you can overlook those quirks, then you may want to consider the GD Tech XMAX 3 for your 3D printing needs. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, let me know in the comments below if you think this printer is a strong competitor to the Bamboo Lab printer. I do have an affiliate link in the description below in case you decide to buy the GD Tech X Max 3. Using that link, I would receive a small commission. My next video will be a slightly different topic because I'm going to evaluate the Creality Falcon 2 22 watt laser engraver and show how it can be used with 3D printed parts. So when that's ready, that link will be here. In the meantime, you may want to watch my top bamboo upgrades for the X1 Carbon P1 series printers, and that link is here. Thanks for watching. Bye.